If you venture into the woods near Smithville, you'll find an old grist mill and lodge that was once built by a Tennessee senator named Edgar Evans. Now, he once entertained a lot of powerful people there. In recent years, though, a Nashville couple bought the place and turned it into a rustic event destination. Here's Teresa Bush to give us a little tour. Evans Mill and the Inn at Evans Mill are amidst thousands of huge hemlock trees in a state natural area. The most notable owner of this land was State Senator Edgar Evans. He bought it back in 1937. Two years later, he and his wife Murdy built a state-of-the-art grist mill. The property's present co-owner, William Cochran, believes it was because of a new business that had just opened up in nearby Lebanon, Martha White. Uh, this mill is, you know, concrete block construction. Most other mills are older and wood construction. Uh, the milling technology associated with our grist mill stone wheels that turn vertically rather than horizontally is another sign of its modern technology. About the same time, the couple built this two-story log cabin or lodge for their family, a place for them to relax. Eventually, their son, Congressman Joe L. Evans, inherited the land, and he too used it as a family getaway and as a place to host his political allies. Congressman Evans gave the property to his alma mater, Vanderbilt University, and my father and mother acquired this property in, in December of 1990 with no commercial intention in mind. They intended to use it as a retreat for our family. William's father made one major renovation to the site. He turned the upper floor of the grist mill into a conference center just for his business associates. That lasted four years. Then William and his father decided their little slice of heaven ought to be shared with the world. They updated the kitchen and built Bluff View guest houses. The inn at Evans Mill opened to the public in December of 1994. Um, when we opened Evans Mill in 1994, we really saw it primarily as a corporate retreat. You know, we didn't see it as a, a bed and breakfast or a, a special event venue of any kind. Certainly corporate retreats and, and off-site meetings continue to be a, a real mainstay of our business, especially during the week. Uh, but now just hosting couples for anniversaries, birthdays, just getting away from the kids for a weekend is also a real big part of it. The guest houses are perched high above Fall Creek. William says they considered a half dozen places and everybody came to the same conclusion. There was only one perfect place. And there's just something about the sight of water and the sound of water that just makes you relax. The rooms are very nice, they're not huge. We really didn't think that people would be spending a lot of time in their rooms. So this is one of the highlights of, of people stay. Our porches are uh, about half as big as our rooms and, and they're right out here on the water and I think people spend as much time out here as they do in their rooms. We have intentionally not put telephones in them. Uh, we did that originally just because we didn't want, the idea was to get away from the phones and the faxes and the emails and, and so forth. And I think it really plays well with corporate groups on the one hand because it really forces the groups to gather. And there are plenty of places to do that. 2,400 square feet of conference space across the creek inside the grist mill, 3,000 square feet inside the lodge. On the first floor of the main room, you'll find big comfy chairs, and when it's cold, you can snuggle near the fireplace. And if you want to stretch your legs, choose from several trails. The most popular one takes you to this 90-foot waterfall, Carmack Falls, the 10th largest in the state of Tennessee. Or you can stroll on one of the paths near the lodge. And come to this swing set. You see, William's grandfather built this back in the 40s, and as you can see, it's still in pretty good shape. That's because he built it according to the way he approached business. If you're going to build something, build to last. So when William opened Evans Mill, his father wanted him to have the swing set, hoping that whatever William built would also last. Of course, food is a big attraction at Evans Mill. Executive chef Jason Evans serves up creative southern gourmet cuisine three times a day. 
There's something to tempt everybody's taste buds. And oh yeah, don't forget those decadent desserts. Jason spent six years as the executive chef on a cruise line before he joined the mill in 2002. It's just really a neat place. Uh, it's a beautiful place. I mean, the property is wonderful. Uh, I grew up in this area, so it's, uh, it's kind of home to me after doing all the traveling and going all over the world. I mean, we went to probably 50 countries and every continent except Africa. Secluded, historic, peaceful. That is what you'll find at Evans Mill, a venture that at first the Cochrans just weren't sure if it would succeed, but it has as more and more people want to escape the city for a relaxing occasion in a picturesque setting that is truly one of a kind. You cannot replicate this no matter how hard you tried. To be able to do something like this and offer something that no one else can do or provide is, is real satisfying. We certainly hope that they take the sound of the running water, the, the trees, uh, just the beauty of the property and, and walk away uh, from this place, a much more relaxed and reinvigorated person than, than when they came.